Are you ready to join me in transforming fear to freedom? That's the objective of the show. Are you ready to explore with me and my guests? Are you ready to get into the deep and play? This is where it's at, and that's what it's all about. No medical advice here. Use discernment and decide for yourself if the information is right for you. All views and opinions expressed on this show belong to the individual and are not necessarily shared with the producer of the show. Want more details? Go to Let's Get Real Chat with Catherine.com. Now let's get real and have some fun. Who are we going to explore with today? Come on with me and let's get into the deep. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Get Real, Chatting with Catherine. And today we're going to be chatting with Rose San Gregorio, talking about uh, Fall Equinox 2014. It is September now, and she really gave us some great info on what's happening on the planet, um, what we can expect to the end of the year, and as well, once again, even though I tried not to mention it, the elementals came in with a pretty loud um, healing noise for us, and Rose explained some of that, and in parts I um, felt I had to kind of type some words just so that you knew what her words were, but as she said, that words weren't as important as the energy of the healing energy about what she was talking about so i hope you're going to enjoy this you could check out more of rose san gregorio on the guest page at let's get real chat with catherine.com lgrcc.com and you can get the link to her website where she's in the process of changing to a new website but all the information on courses she's giving and um, healing nights and so forth and her book journey to self-enlightenment which i mentioned in the video it's a tool it's a perfect tool for these times uh energy's changing and um, it's important for us to take a look at what's available to us what we can do and to empower ourselves and rose is such a sweet teacher and um takes us into the metaphysical with such ease and a lot of times you don't even notice that she's channeling the information but for the most part she is so um let's get into this chat with rose san gregorio on let's get real chatting with Catherine right now. So welcome back to Let's Get Real, chatting with Catherine Rose San Gregorio. It's my absolute pleasure to um, meet with you again and um, chat about what's going on. Thank you for joining us. Hi Catherine and hello to everyone and um, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here today and I'm excited to see what we're going to talk about and the, what comes out of my mouth kind of thing and uh, yeah. So, it's always delicious, isn't it? It's kind of like being, you know, you're going somewhere that's going to be really exciting, but you're not sure what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that. Well, the last time we spoke was in June, and I'm not even going to mention what we talked about because we always get friends when we do that. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just did a week, a retreat on the. On yeah. The well,. <laughs> Well, that yeah, I just I thought, oh, but maybe I better not even bring that up because because uh, I think we're going to talk about some other things too. Although that may come up, and people who are interested can always go back and check the show in June and find out what I'm talking about. But what I um, I know you've been traveling um, and doing some. So um, would you like to share with us a little bit about what you've been doing and what you've been noticing? Because uh, when people travel and meet people at that, you know, different places, I think they always discover things that are definitely not on the news. Okay, so, yeah, we've had a busy summer, busy, busy summer. And as always, we were in Denmark, and we've done a few other travels. And what do I say? Um, gosh, after our event in June, our, our talk last June, a lot has happened this summer. I don't want to get into what happened in the summer which is part of the past, but of course what happened this past summer is also part of our future. And one thing that was very important to talk about is that... You know what? It doesn't matter that I didn't mention it. There's some... <laughs> now maybe that's just cheeky. I That oh. noise, that noise is definitely elemental. I, it hurt, this is exactly what happened to us last time, and that's kind of funny. This computer, we use it extensively. It has, it has never done it, and it never does it, except for when you and I talk, 
and we do these these talks. So but it has that, only happened in the last two um, times because we were talking about elementals, and so. But this time I didn't say it, but energetically I certainly was thinking it, and you knew it, and then it's kind of almost like this. Hey, don't forget us. We're not going to forget you, Elementals. You're huge. You're a major part of our lives. Well, and I just came out of a retreat with a whole group of people in Golden, B.C., where it was with the Elementals and experiencing them on a conscious level. So it could be that energy as well that's still with me because of the retreat. But um, going back to the summer and what I've observed and where we're at right now, because, of course, this coming weekend is the equinox, and this, this weekend is very important for all of us. So just backtracking a little bit over the summer, um, we had a very important event that occurred from about July 26th to August 12th, and it happens every year. It's a portal opening that happens every year, and it's um, in the, the sign of Leo, the lion. It aligns us every year to receiving information of what the next year, it's kind of like a new year, but it's different than the new year that we have on the calendar. And this new year, is an, it's a download of information to all of us of what are we to do this coming year? As, as light workers, as people who are on this planet, and if you don't believe you're a light worker, that's okay too. But literally, as souls in an embodied human form, what are we here to do this coming year? It's coming up, and so it's a dispensation that's given to everyone. It's individual to each person because everyone has their own life plan, everyone has their own mission, their own purpose. Um, but I also know. Can you? I tried turning up my volume a bit, but I'll speak louder. But it's about as loud as I can go without yelling. Or was I? Sorry. So going? No, no, don't worry. <laughs> I just channel. It's not like I have to remember where I was. It's like I have to go back up to that spot. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what's ended up happening is everyone's received messages whether you've consciously gotten them through meditation, through communication with your own guides, but we've all received them also in our dream time. So a lot of people have experienced this sense of, wow, you know, I think I need to change my job, or I think I need to start this new project, or this project I've been part of, it's no longer part of me. So it's like we get the information consciously or unconsciously, but during that time period, everyone is downloaded with this information. What is the next year going to bring to us? What is it as an individual that I need to be focusing on? And as a collective, what do we focus on? And so that time period, up until August 12th, was very strong. And I know for many, many, many people, there were huge shifts in people's lives during those couple of weeks period of time. We also received a beautiful meditation with uh, one of the guides, Lord Metatron, with the new codes that help us to integrate more fully physically in our bodies. And I will put that on my website. We're just launching a new website, so in the next week or two, we're going to have that up. And so if anybody's interested, they can download it. But I, I want people to know that because I've had many people call me, email, in sessions, and classes saying, wow, you know, this is happening, I've done something wrong, I've been focused on this path. But it's not. It's not that you've done something wrong. It's because you've done something right. It's like you've done, it's like you've done, you've fulfilled what you needed to fulfill up to this point. And with the world changing, where do you need to be standing? to foster the new world we're, we're creating on this planet. And so it is creating a lot of friction for some, but also for some people that friction is like an easing forward into a new space. So bringing that into what, what was the message, well, the message basically in a nutshell, and if people want, you can download the lecture because I don't want to spend an hour from the lecture telling you. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That's what a gift. So the 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 message is that we are literally standing 
in the new paradigm. We are in it now. We've always sort of we visioned it, and we've dreamed it, and, and then the message was, okay, now it's time to bring the dream into this reality. Well, now it's time to walk the talk. And for many people, walking the talk means, okay, if you haven't aligned completely to where you're meant to be and what you're meant to be doing, the universe will support you to move to that alignment, whatever that is. And so what is going to happen this next year, it is all about moving into physically embodying this new path we're all meant to be on for serving this new world that we're manifesting. I've been so feeling that. That's such confirmation. That's exactly how I've been feeling that the energy is so um, powerful and exciting. And, and sometimes I just, I get so excited that I can't just, I can't even contain it. I just, you know, yeah. thankfully I write too because otherwise I'd be just gushing all the time. But the thing that I wondered when you said um, the universe will support you if you're, you know, you're not exactly on the path you need to be on or you had planned to be on maybe intended maybe at a higher level um, the universe supports you in in moving into that sometimes now that to, almost sounds like a very positive thing but sometimes that support could mean could look like struggle right or could look well, like chaos of course because the next step to that is whatever needs to be brought to you to be able to, to move into this space, to be able to express yourself in this new whatever it is. The universe, if, if you're not listening, if you don't have the practice of being still and listening with your heart, what is my next step? It's not about what am I going to do in a year from now. It's not about a, a month from now. This is about my next step. In this moment, right here, right now, what am I to be doing? And so as you listen, you will be guided in what needs to be done. And if you don't hear that still small voice within, or you don't hear the message, the universe will actually bring to you maybe people that can say, wow, you know, I have this idea, do you want to hear it? Or you might have people who come into your life that trigger you to show you, wow, I don't think I want to be doing this anymore. So things start to get a little more... Um, intense, I guess would be the word, in experiencing your life. So, yes, definitely. If, if um, Even if you're paying attention sometimes and you're listening, sometimes to break down the old structure, remember, we're talking about physical embodiment now. So if I'm living in a house that is no longer appropriate for me to be living in, in the quadrant of the city I'm no longer meant to be living, right. then something will happen. I might get the message I need to move, but at the same time, I might think, okay, I'll look for a house next week, or I'll look for another place. And, and the universe wants you now. They want you to move now. Really? It's time, right? And so what might happen, this is just an example, it doesn't yeah. mean it yeah. happens for everyone, it might happen that, wow, my neighbors become real hard people to live next to and it's like I just can't be here anymore I gotta get out of here faster sooner rather than later kind of thing it's like a pressure a pressure starts to happen and if you still don't listen then something else might happen and then we start to look at it as a traumatic event um, or a chaotic event but that's because the structure of the old has to be taken down Right. Because so there would be little signs before that, probably. There were little signs before that you have to move now. You probably had some little signs, and you've been feeling that. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's time to look for something. Like that. that might have happened months ago, but you just let it go. It uh, sounds like too much work, or I don't exactly. you know. And now it's like you didn't listen to the little sort of nudge. Now we're getting louder, now we're saying now, and then like you say, something else happens like your neighbors or whatever. Um, I just want people to know, because I'm not going to be able to edit this out, um, and what Rose is saying is really important, and I'm going to do my very best to um, raise her voice and not the, um, the, the, the background noise, the elementals are adding to it, but as Ro Rose, you've said this before, that when that happens, it's actually for healing energy, That yeah. so when people view it, there is an actual positive um, 
um, gift that people get from that. So I'm not going to worry about that, but I just wanted people to know. And you, if you're what really watching, you'll notice the noise isn't there. Um, I call it noise. I'll call, I should call it the gift. The gift isn't present when I'm speaking. It comes from Rose. It's around Rose, and it's being emanating from Rose. So for all of us, so that's very cool. But I wanted to let people know, you know, it's not a tech. Uh, technical difficulty it's a reality that we do live in this physical world and the elementals are part of it and they're because um, sometimes it sounds like waves and sometimes it just sounds like shh, white noise or something but yeah sometimes it's like a wind yeah um, yeah I work in extensively with all beings of light including the elemental beings and of course because of that and we're talking about anchoring physically in this world and we're made of physical matter, so of course they're going to come through. So when you say anchoring in this physical world, just for, because um, I know that people are at all different phases um, coming to um, the network of shows, coming to Let's Get Real Chatting with Catherine. Uh, some people have been with us for a long time, some people are new. So sometimes I'll be triggered to, to ask for explanation. So when you're um, saying we're anchoring, you please, you know, if you could just. Um, expand think, on that a little bit. Um, what I mean, what I mean by when I use the word anchoring, it means that um, I can I can imagine things. And when I say I, I don't mean Rose I. I mean I, meaning you I, the person listening I. I can imagine things. I can imagine being a divine being. I can imagine myself in loving kindness with everyone I meet, to stay neutral in all the events. I can imagine it. Now, what I mean, what I mean by anchoring is, if someone comes up to me and, I don't know, rips up one side of me and down the other, I violet flame all this negative stuff as I talk about it. For those who don't know, the violet flame is a transformation by the violet flame. <laughs> so, um, so someone comes up to me and rips one end of me and up the one end and then down the other end. The embodiment or the anchoring is not am I just dreaming it, but I'm able to, with love in my heart, give them love and say thank you. And that's it. I don't have to justify. I don't have to um, get back at them. I don't have to bring them down a notch. I mean, those are all reactive energies. And so anchoring it means daily living. It's being in the moment, living the dream. Right. Living, like being it. Being, you know, Nelson Mandela said, be the change you want to see in the world. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When I, say anchoring. I become that change. I become the being, that person that emanates this unconditional love to everyone I need. And yes, there's times when someone can rip one side of me and down another. If I stay neutral in my divine energy, my divine love, I can know in my heart the appropriate action. And so again, that's the angry in the moment of the action. What, what am I to do here? Do, do I um, respond in a way that they need to be realizing that this is not appropriate? Or do I just walk away? Or do I just say, thank you? You know, is there something going on that we need to talk about? So in that moment of your presence anchored in your body, like I'm here, I'm present, right. I know what to say and do so that I'm serving the higher good of all. And there's the energy clearing for people. In the heart area, the heart and soul, the mind and brain, the energy to help you be more aligned to experiencing being in your body okay so I, I don't want to interrupt the energy but what occurs to me is when you are anchored and you are you know knowing the divine presence within you and, and responding to life with neutrality or with love or so forth but there will be people who on their path and I include myself in this there's times when someone would say um, rip a strip off of you or say something to you that you felt was unwarranted or whatever and you um, you you didn't respond that way in love and in um, maybe you you felt it personally maybe it really hurt you maybe you really are angry maybe you're thinking 
that dirty dog like why did they you know and that um is i mean the important thing it would be ideally would be to not have that reaction but we're human and so we we often do what can a person do if they're having that it, it not having the loving in the moment anchored <laughs> what if what if they're having the other um how quickly we clear that how important is it to get out of that and what could we do to to move into being more of the anchored well you know we are in human form for a reason mm -hmm. one of them is to experience life on earth in a physical body with the ability to have thoughts feelings emotions and to be able to make choices we have conscious will and we can make the conscious choice to have the thoughts, feelings, emotions that we choose. So when we're reacting, those thoughts, feelings, and emotions, behaviors, they come from a place of having, having had an experience similar where we have had to protect ourselves in some way. And so we create these behaviors. Right, right. Triggered. Okay, so those are the triggers. And so how do we change that? Well. We aspire to be this divine being that's in harmony to all creation. We aspire to be at peace and harmony with everyone around us. And that's an aspiration as a human that we desire to have in our lives. When we reach a point where we don't consciously choose to respond from that better place or that higher expression, because you know, I did get pissed off. Somebody just yelled at me for no reason or whatever. Number one, it's important to recognize you still are a human. And you still have thoughts and feelings and emotions. And so it's okay to respond from a trigger. What's not okay is when you recognize it and you say, oh, well, that was my trigger. And I don't need to leave it. What's important is to recognize there has been a trigger. The response was not from a higher place, from a loving place. And then to recognize where do I have those thoughts and feelings that got triggered, those reactive energies that were triggered that I need to change. So, I mean, that's where you go for help. I believe that we should learn to help ourselves through our own inner source, our own connection from our heart and soul to our divine presence to our divine, whoever that is for us. And I believe if we can strengthen our connection on a daily basis through spiritual practice, where we open our hearts and we connect to the divine, we can know in the moment, even if in the, minute, in the moment we have a reaction, we can recognize the reaction and we can go in and change those triggers, those negative thoughts and feelings. The yeah. emotions attached to it. So, where can you go? Well, of course, my book. We've talked about my book in other shows. My book has plenty and plenty of tools that worked. They worked for me, and they've worked for thousands of my clients and yeah, students. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> Journey to Self-Enlightenment, and that has been translated into Danish as well for people who are not aware. But, you know, the other part of it is to really recognize that it is a choice and that when, you know, I feel like, Probably most people who are watching these shows um, will come from a place of uh, either just curiosity or they've decided that, yeah, I'm kind of tired of living in a certain way and I'm ready to change. And because I really feel like when you're talking about, you notice the triggers and there's people who say, oh yeah, that's my trigger. And there are people who do not want to change. And I think for the rest of us, Let's just acknowledge that some people do not want to change. They have, they think it's too hard, or they don't see a reason to. And mostly humans don't change unless they're uncomfortable. So we, you know, we. I feel it's respect for each each person and on their journey. But the the reason I like to do these shows is to let people who are ready to change, who want to change, who want something different, to recognize there's tools oh. available. Um. Just one comment I'd like to make is when people are listening to this, when anyone listens to this, as I speak, you hear the sound and it changes. It's a vibrational tone. 
that people are receiving and that vibrational tone is helping to heal whatever it is you need to heal as an individual person listening um, whatever you need to heal based on what I'm talking about and that's why the sounds change because whatever I'm talking about is the words but what's more important is the healing I believe this is how I teach it's how I work and I know that that's why this is happening I believe that if we feed our left brain the part of us that needs to understand it allows us to open up to receive not only the changes but the transformation and so the vibrational tones that are coming through are helping people to change at a cellular vibrational level Wow, and that's what's going on. This is a huge opportunity for people too to um, to because I imagine if I listen to this in another month or a couple of weeks or whatever, it would heal wherever I'm at at that point. It's kind so of every like, time you listen, you receive a healing, and I know that's the same for my book. Every time you read it, you get different information. You get you receive healing when you listen to my meditations that are downloadable or the ones on CDs, it's all the same. It's the message I've received from day one. Everything is coded so people can receive healing, not just once, but over and over and over, based on what, what's being done. Wow. So, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's getting to, you know, when I th just for a second had a flashback, if uh, this was me in 1980, listening to you talk about energy this way, I would be probably overwhelmed and yet today this is so natural to us or to many of us the understanding that we are energy um, like a, a recording can have a healing effect on people not just when they listen to it live but listen to it months down the road this is very powerful this this to me is in a confirmation of how much we've raised the vibration on the planet and how these tools are being revealed yes yes and, you know, there was a time that I had to sort of, I, I've never censored my words, but I have to a degree based on the audience. And I know in my earlier days, whenever I did like an interview like this, the ability for me to speak as freely as I do now was not there because people were just not ready to receive the information at that level. It was more simplified. It wasn't as intensive. It wasn't as detailed as well. But let me continue um, because I want to talk about the rest of this year. I know we have another talk in December, so that's getting right close to the end of the year. So I do want to let the people who are listening, um, no matter when you listen to this, even if it's in a year or five years from now, you're still going to get the, the healings. But this time, as that, that window closed in August, here we are coming into the equinox, and consistently, time and time again, the masters or my guides have said to me the equinox from March of 2014 to the equinox of September 2014 also was another portal of time. And it had to do with, again, bringing forward the energies for people to come into that place of neutrality or another way to say it, the place of non-separation. Because that energy that was opened from that equinox to this one was again triggering us to recognize where do we have energies of non-separation. And so a lot of the work we've been doing during the two equinoxes, which this weekend is the second one, has been around triggers within us, within our psyche or unconscious, lower self, whatever you call it. So, whatever needs to happen for people is to be able to recognize where do we separate ourselves not just from ourselves, but from each other. And so it's very interesting that Scotland is doing their election or whatever they call it, a referendum, to see if they're going to separate. 
So our new world is going to be about non-separation. So we can be separate people. I mean, I'm different than you are, but we're not separate in our common goal to bring the best of who we are to this planet to create a world that's in harmony. Right, so right. These, these events that have happened in this last little while, and I know there's more coming. They've told me this from the beginning of this year. There's more events happening that are going to push us all to look at those events and say, where do I separate myself? Where do I feel like um, I'm better than the other? Or this is better than that? Or this is right and this is wrong? Because from each side of the coin, it's always right. Right. And, and this is, is when you say more coming, you mean um, before the end of this year? Yes. As we move towards the end of the year, there's a few more blips. I like to call them blips. Um, and as we move into 2015, we're going to be called, we're all going to be called to truly um, be who we're meant to be. So if people are still afraid to be who they are because they don't think they're good enough or smart enough or evolved enough, or, I mean, what will happen is we will be pushed to the limit to be able to break down those, those beliefs. And that's all I can say. It's not good or bad. It's just what's going to be. Yeah. And yeah. so for all of us, what I can say for everyone listening is do your work. Yeah. Notice, when do you separate yourself? When do you make uh, this and that, right and wrong? It's like you come from a place of neutrality. Everything's perfect as it is. But in this moment right now, serving the highest good of all, for the greater good of all creation, what is my role to be played? Some people need to be the advocates. Some people need to be the warriors. Some people need to be the meditators. And so all of us have a role to play so that everything can be brought into alignment. So our world right now, if I can put it in more sort of succinct black and white terms, right. our world has been taken from where we've been all these years thrown up in the air, you've got all of these aspects of creation in the air wanting to come down back into place, but how do they go back into place for this new world we are manifesting right now? So and we're in it, right? We're in the new world. Like you said that at the beginning, and I want to reconfirm that. We're in it. it it's it, here. It's here. It's about walking the talk. It's not anymore. And so, yes, of course, people still need to take classes. People still need to read books, still need to get help. That's part of the process. It's part of being human, learning that it's okay to be human, but I don't want to be limited anymore as a human. I want to be human, but I want to be unlimited as a spiritual being. But even, so, of course, you need help. Well, sometimes. I was, was going to say, even... Um because we've had so many eons on this planet of a uh, history of certain things and in our lineage, each one of us, our uniqueness, our family lineage has wounds and beliefs and all those things which I'm understanding don't, won't, some of them won't fit in the new world. So we're going to experience a little chaos disharmony until we heal and um, let go of the old beliefs so that we can walk with ease and grace in the new world like we're here but it's not just a matter of magically here you are in your destination the energies there on the earth uh, supporting us but we have to do our work like we still have to and there's a lot of people who haven't even peeled open the page of the first book and so we're going to see a lot more people who are going to be saying, wait a minute. I see a lot of people who are living a different life than I am living, and I want that too. So I think there's going to be a lot more people who are looking to what we used to call light workers or um, people who are, like yourself, a metaphysical teacher, spiritual teachers. You know, you're going to be more in demand, which is probably why you can't really do individual reading so much anymore. Um, and have to do the group, have to do the, the, the teaching in a more mass because there's seven billion of us and each there aren't there aren't as many teachers you know as there are people. So 
people that have done their work like you, Rose, um, we're really fortunate to be able to use the internet and so forth to reach more and more people. Well, and you know, I just want to say this. It, it's like this world we live in has to change. I know people agree it has to change. Yeah. Everybody has the agreement on for various reasons, but it has to change. Our world can no longer survive or, or be the way it is. And so, definitely, definitely, as people are being moved towards walking that talk, living, living the change you want to be, being it in every moment of every day, there will be uncomfortable spots. There will be people who refuse to change, and there will be people who just don't believe in it all, and that's okay. I know from my messages that I receive that if we can get the hundred monkey effect happening, then the world will change. And the hundred monkey effect is there it's like if we get enough people, that fifty-one percent, to come to that place of non-separation, right. harmonized to all people, accepting people as they are, taking all the goodness out of everything that's there, letting go of the stuff that no longer serves, and we create this new world together. That other 49% will have to move into this arena. Otherwise, it's no big deal. They will die and go to a whole new paradigm. And that's fine. It's not, I'm not saying that, oh well, people are going to die, that's great. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's the way evolution works. It's like, and it's not survival of the fittest. Yeah, it's not punishment. And no. it's not punishment. It's, it is a choice. And some people may... In the body they have today, in the life experience, in the belief, in their ability to accept or not accept, they, they maybe just can't. They just, they can't accept that there's something new or possible. And so death is kind of a, um, an, uh, an option, a way out. Like so, because they, they just can't. They just don't want to do it. It's too much. And because uh, this is this is a pretty big change, pretty significant. What's happened in the last twenty years? Huge, and we've got like we've only touched the tip of the iceberg, yeah. and so that's why we're witnessing on our planet a lot of turmoil. It looks like a lot of turmoil. What it is is we've got these pieces that need to break down, and to break down, they have to do something to bring the attention of everything around so that it can be supported for the breakdown to come in and the new to be created. So I have to talk about these um, beheadings that have been happening. I don't follow them on the news, but um, there's been some beheadings and now, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's awful. It's an, a, a terrible thing. People are being beheaded and publicly being shown on, on the media. But uh, my message is it's important for people to, of course, have compassion for the person it's happening to, compassion for the people that are connected to that person, the family, the friends. But it's forcing our world to come together and say, you know what, this has to stop. Yeah. Because after 9-11, a lot happened. But I believe, from what I'm getting, that people have become too complacent. So something has to happen to shift things some more. Right. And so my prayer, my hope, is that this doesn't have to happen again, one more person again. My hope is that as everyone comes into this realization, something needs to be done. And it needs to be done now, not next year, or not let's wait and see. Something has to be done. Yeah. We need to bring together the world collective energy, and what do we do? And so if that happens, that's why these things are happening. It's to push us. To, to say enough. Enough. We've had enough of that violence. We've had enough of that kind of behavior, beliefs. We've had enough of what spurned it, too. Not just the beheading, but the stuff that's behind it, the underneath, the, the stuff that's got to come out. We've had enough of, of business as usual that we've kind of come to accept. And Yeah. And, and that something like that that's on the media, some people say, well, I wish they wouldn't tell us that. But as you're saying, it's, it's, a, it's a catalyst 
to get us to get out of our comfort zone and say, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and even not just that we physically have to do something, but change what we're willing to accept. That's not acceptable, right? And you see, in, in the spiritual world, again, from my understanding, what I've been taught and how I teach, is that there are things that are acceptable to serve the greater good of all, but there are things that are not acceptable. And it's got to do with morals and values from the greater good perspective, not morals and values because somebody decides, oh, well, this is not going to be good, you know. Right. Um, but this coming next three months, until we get to the new year, until we get to the solstice, is really going to be a lot of uh, tumultuous energy and a lot of chaotic energy. And it's important everyone holds the stillness within themselves so that you keep that place of inner stillness that you can be connected to your own inner voice or your God self or to God or to spirit, whatever you call it, so that when things are happening, you know in your heart what your role is at that point. And that's where the walking the talk comes in. It's like, I can sit at home and pray and pray and pray, but if I'm guided that, okay, Rose, you need to go to this place and you need to talk to people, then no matter how uncomfortable it is for me and how scared I am, I will do what I'm guided to do to serve the greater good of all. I can sit at home and pray and pray and pray and hope that everybody's loving and kind, and, but you know, nothing will change if that's all I do. Like, and that could be as sorry. That could be as simple as like for you because of what you do. So if you are asked to go and speak somewhere to a lot of people or something like that, but it could also be as simple as the person who is feels like they need to go to the supermarket today and they don't really need certain things but they think oh I guess I do I'll, I don't know or you just you're driving along and you feel like you have to stop somewhere if you follow that guidance like you say it could be the matter that you run into a person who and all you do is smile at them but they haven't been smiled at for a long time so if you're taking you know or say thank you or open a door for someone or the cashier at the supermarket three people ahead of you were really angry at her and you come along and you're very compassionate and understanding and even though she seems a little upset you you're able to um, meet her in a place of you know I see you and um, it's a beautiful day and you're a beautiful person and you don't have to use those words but your presence like we sometimes forget how our presence our our ability to be joy in a crowd or in anywhere can change the energy so quickly that that might be our job. Not everybody's well, going to have your job, Rose. That's all I'm saying is the little things. And and that's where I'm saying, and, and you know, the thing to, to clarify is, using your example, so three people ahead of me have been really unkind to the cashier. And, you know, now she's really upset and, and you go up there and I, I go up there and I say, hi, how are you? It's not about trashing the three people ahead of me that were unkind to her. See, some people think that that's, you know, getting that rapport like, yeah, buddy, buddy, they were really mean to you. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about positive stuff like, wow, what a great day and, you know, hope all is going well for yeah, you. Yeah, you're what kind of neutral to the up. three. You're, you are aware of the three ahead of you because you saw it, you maybe witnessed it, but you're from a place of neutrality and all you're being is you, authentically you in your joy. Or You know, sometimes, Rose, when you're really in your joy, really in your anchor, like you say, you wouldn't even notice the three. You would just meet the woman from person to person, soul to soul. Hi, how are you? What an awesome day. And without even any tailings of what happened, but I'm just saying the scenario could have happened, but you're not aware of it because you're aware of that this is a really great planet. Like there's yeah. good things happening. And so you're sharing from that energy. But you need to be aware of what's around you. Mm -hmm. so people check out and they're in this other place and, and they're lovely and everything's great and hi, how are you? But you need to be in your body. This is the anchoring part. Mm -hmm. It's like being aware of what's all around you 
and yet at the same time you get don't get attached to it you see mm -hmm. and that's something to be aware of because sometimes people get that mixed up they think oh well then I need to be in this lovely place and everything's great and but they're not present in what's around them and so maybe those three people ahead of you um, have had really bad days and it's like now they come to the grocery store and they were looking for something and it happened to all three of them they're looking for something they really need and they can't find it that kind of thing so it's to be aware for everyone because when I stand in the power of my presence and my divine self I emanate that love I emanate that light I emanate the joy and those three people will be touched by it anyway yeah and sometimes it could be the cashier who had got up in the morning, things didn't go well, she got to work, and every person she saw, she met with, hi, good, you know, <laughs> like yeah. grumpy and, and angry, and so the people met, and if you're not aware, you would take that personally, as opposed to being able to go with your own place of neutrality, like, you have to be aware, um, because of for, for one thing in the physical you want to be aware of the traffic you want to be aware of the guy with the road rage beside you you want to be aware of it but you're talking about having a position of neutrality and being in your space of love but being aware so it's kind of like because sometimes people yeah they get into very spiritual I meditate life is good and I don't see anything else but that's not very helpful either because then you're not you're not anchoring it which yes. goes back to what you said at the beginning I mean bringing in the love the the crystalline energy through your body and into the earth as opposed to you going up there and playing up there all the time and just sort of the physical body really isn't um, experiencing well, and that's, you know, it's so important, especially nowadays with these energies that are happening on the planet and in our universe, our cosmos, and to stay in the body, anchor to the earth, beyond to the light. Um, it's really, really, really important. And um, I, you know, if you don't have a spiritual practice, I don't mean you have to have a spiritual practice where you meditate every day. A spiritual practice for me when I teach my students is it's anything that uh, that opens your heart to your divine self, to your presence of God or whoever that is for you. Allah, Buddha, whatever, the creator of the universe. So if you do that every day, 15 minutes minimum a day, it can be prayer, it can be chanting, it can be singing, it can be dancing, it can be meditating, it can be whatever works for you. And I personally, in the beginning, used to get bored very fast. Like, I used to get bored really fast. So, if I chanted every day, it would drive me nuts and I would never complete it or done my work. And so, what I learned, and this is how I learned, it doesn't matter what you do, it's how you do it. It's being in the body, feeling the vibration of the words of the chant, feeling those sacred vibrations of the words that you're chanting in the cells of your body as well as in the auric field. Um, if I'm singing or I'm praying, I feel the words of the words I'm saying. So a lot of people, they just say it. It's by rote and it's from their head, but you want to say it from your heart and from your whole being. And when you meditate, it's not about leaving your body and hanging out up here. It's about being in your body, experiencing your meditation through the physical body. So what I found and what worked for me and what I teach my students is do different things, find what works for you. There's no right or wrong. How you communicate to the divine is it's, it's your way, it's, as long as it's there. And as these events happen on the planet, and there's going to be more. I mean, I, I would love to say, oh, we've reached the other side and we're anchoring the new world. No, but to anchor the new world means growing pains. And those are the great, great pains. How do we act and react in a physical world to the people around us? Right. And uh, I'm just going to repeat that last part because your voice was very low. You were saying how we react to the world is what's important, right? How you act and react. And react. Acting is, is being in the presence, neutral. I, I, I behave this way. I act this way. Reactive is... I get triggers, and from those triggers is how I behave. So 
in my world, you know, I like to differentiate the two. Right. And it's important for people to realize the difference. Reactive energies separate us. Yeah. And so as soon as I start to react, I've separated. Yeah. yeah. And um, action comes from the heart knowing where I feel one to everyone, I feel in communion, communion with everyone, we are one, we collaborate together, we cooperate together, and what is my job? So, do you feel that, um, and I, I know, I'm, we're not sure if you're kind of complete with the year-end stuff, but I wanted to say is, when we are, okay, so we are aware of that there's this chaos going on and things are, uh, upheaval in, in people, some in personal lives, some in the global, and so forth. But we have a lot of help um, from the celestial beings, from the higher guides yeah. and, and angels. Like, we're not in this alone. We're in, we have that connection to divinity. Um, so when we ask for help, it's there. And and people need to know, Be I think it would be helpful for people to be understanding that. And I know we've talked about this before, but just because I, I really want to offer people a couple of things with the show today and, and the insight, the healing that Rose is giving us, but also the understanding that it's not all lost. I mean, being Rose is being very clear. Yeah, stuff's happening, but also we have tools. And, and which is why some people like you, Rose, started on your path a long time ago, so you'd be ready for just these times. Um, so you'd be able to help the people that are just waking up now it's kind of like the person gets in gets the lifeboat gets in anchors it to those and can pick up other people that's how i i see some of the people like like yourself rose so can you do you want to speak to that at all about the the fact that we are having this um help like never before it feels like the vibration is raised and we have a lot of help definitely as we've raised our vibration collectively on the planet it has allowed us to also experience more consciously the divine beings that are there. They're always there. They're always there. From the elementals to the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, cosmic beings, all of them. They're always there. But as we've raised our personal consciousness or individual consciousness and our vibration is higher, it's collectively affected our planet to raise the planet's vibration to higher that allows us the ability to communicate more effortlessly and more easily with all these beings that are always there. But they also have a dictate of non-interference. Like, they, they're there, but we have free will choice in this world. So we can choose to let them just hang out, and they, of course, have their roles. But we can choose, through free will choice, to invite them to work with us. That's we can awesome. ask for their help. Yeah. And yes. they will come every single time you ask. All beings will respond to each one of us. And the more of us that ask for help and work with them consciously, we actually create a, a synergy that starts to happen. And again, non-separation. And so that will allow all of us on this planet to be able to get even more help than we've ever had before. But the key is we have to ask. You have to ask. It's kind of like, um, let's, because we're in different realms, we're in different dimensions. So if I was in dimension number three, which is the earth, I'm in this room I'm in right now, but there's a window here beside me, and on the other side of the window are all these people. And, you know, I need to move this bookcase in this room. And I can try to do it myself, but all I have to do is maybe knock on the window and say, do you guys want to come in my door and help me in the bookcase? I mean, that's kind of like what it is. They're there, they're doing their thing. But if you ask for help, they will come. Yeah. They yeah. will come. But you ask not from a place of fear, mm -hmm. because when you put out fear, oh, I need help because I'm scared, um, for whatever reason, then they will come to you based on the fear, not on the help for the greater good of all. And no, that didn't come out right. Hold on, let me say it again. I ask for help, and I'm in fear. Like, oh my God, I'm not going to have enough money at the end of the month. 
to pay my bills. So please bring me some money, universe, bring me money. Well, the universe will respond, but not necessarily will they bring you money the way you think. They will bring you money the way you need to get money to help you grow. Because I'm in fear of not having enough money. Ah. So I need to learn, I need to learn to be neutral that if I have money, that's great. If I don't have money, I trust that I'll be looked after anyway. That so, yeah, that does, but um, because th this question came to me when you did say that, um, let's say I have to, I have to, I work at a certain place and I have to walk to my house and I have to walk down this certain avenue, this road that I, it's just the way it is right now. I have to go, go from point A to point B and it makes me really nervous to walk that path just because it's dark, I get off my shift late, or whatever, that just this is a scenario where I'm a little kid and I've got to go to school and I'm afraid of the bullies or I'm afraid of, um, you know, maybe something happened to me. From that place of fear, um, and I'm asking for help, and okay. the way I'm kind of getting a little bit, you, you, the help's going to come, but would it come in the way that I can, I will meet with something and be able to pass by it so that I can get over my fear as opposed to not having any obstacle? Um, it depends on what your, your agendas are. <laughs> it depends on what your thoughts and feelings are. It depends on um, what your tapes are telling you. So it's not as cut and dry as, as it sounds. It's like, if I'm walking down that street using your, your example, and I don't feel comfortable, there is no other way for me to get home. I don't have a car, um, I, I, I don't have the money to buy, pay for a bus or a taxi, so I have to walk home. And if I pray from my heart and say, you know, I really need help, I need to be safe, the universe will respond in having whatever needs to happen happen so that you get home safe. So if there's somebody there that's going to attack you, they, something might happen to them and they don't even receive their back, you, whatever. But if you're going home and you're uncomfortable and, and you know, it comes from a place of meanness. So we have to look at the, 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 the energy behind it. So um, you're going home from work and you're mean to everybody at work and you don't, you're not nice to people and and um, you know, you're gonna go home and you can't wait to get home and yell at the kids or beat the dog <laughs> other. Okay, so that's kind of and so I'm walking home, I'm going, okay, keep me safe, I don't wanna I don't wanna need anything, so I wanna get home faster so I can uh, whatever. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of energy if that person is there that was gonna attack you, then the universe might let that happen so that you can realize what it's like to be attacked or realize what it's like to be um, a victim. Yeah. And so yeah. it depends on you, the person who's putting out the call, right. where you're coming from. So if I'm in my, my place of an open heart with compassionate love and I ask for help, the universe helps. And it helps in a way to keep you always safe, to keep you always fulfilling your greater good. But if you're um, mean-spirited or there's a lesson that you need to learn then that lesson will be brought to you so you can learn how to be different right and like when you um, I'm thinking about how um, the difference in the energy that you put out like when for instance I when I get it I've got to go and do my errands today say I'm gonna get in my car I put a white light of protection around myself for the intention that I'm gonna be safe and get through my day with ease and grace and everything's right I'm pretty neutral about it I don't expect anything bad to happen I'm just I'm I'm sort of having the conversation with my guides and angels sort of saying come with me um, you know let's go through this day and help me to you know put a buffer around my car so I don't hit any animals let them know I'm coming kind of thing so I'm in that space as opposed to, oh, I'm going to get in my car and I'm afraid that, um, yeah, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm visualizing my imagination that, oh, something bad's going to happen, wheel's going to fall off, or I'm going to run into somebody or somebody's going to hit me again today because, you know, that happened before or whatever. And then I go from that. So 
it's a place of being kind of neutral, calling in the help, but not using because we can. Um, oh yeah, manifest got- a lot of things by our yeah visualizing. And, and really putting energy into it. Like, I'm afraid uh, there's a bad guy and it's going to hurt me and it's going to be... So it's it's also that, right? Like, how we imagine our days to be and how they... And, and what the energy we put out. Because that's what you're saying about when you're being a mean person, you're attacking people at work, you're grumpy, you're miserable, you have a vibration that is going to... It's like a big radar for the guy that's hide, hiding in the bushes waiting for you too because... Like attracts like, right? And so even if the person, that, that negative person says, oh, please protect me. Well, you will look at protection, but not the way you think. Because the protection you will get might be to help you realize being this mean person is not going to work anymore. And so something will happen. So it's really important. It's, it's easy to say cut and dry, right? Be a good person and you'll always be safe and protected that's not always necessarily true be a bad person you're always not safe and that's not necessarily true a hundred percent of the time it's just that um you know a short interview like this and five ten minutes of description that's the best i can do to explain things yeah i know i i want people to know that it's possible to look at things in a different way and that they can certainly um, access the tools like your book which is a I mean it doesn't matter um, how long you've had it you can resource it use it as a resource every day if you wish um, because you could learn more and more and that's the key is that because I know I had a conversation um, that I was you know was unfortunately on Facebook so it was really not the right uh, format but somebody was talking about um, people being raped or people being molested or attacked or or even just touched inappropriately and I was saying that you can energetically protect yourself from that so that <clears throat> you don't um, you can learn to actually be safe in the world feel safe be confident and I mean I was attacked like that was the most stupidest thing they'd ever heard that you know they felt that was magical and that was ridiculous and what they weren't understanding is that through energy and and I know it's it we don't have enough time to go into the details but people can learn how to energetically be safe in the world and to it doesn't mean that nothing is ever going to happen to you but it, it there you are giving off a vibration so could you just speak to that we are giving off a vibration well we are energetic beings i mean when you break everything down we're we're made up of energy and um this is nothing new. I mean, it's scientifically shown and proven. We are energetic beings. Every thought I have is a vibration. Every feeling I have is a vibration. Thoughts and feelings vibrate together to create my emotions. The emotional body, which is also vibration, okay, becomes energetics of me. So it's like we talk about an aura. That's the energy field I carry. For me, for Rose, for you, for Catherine is your own, and each person has their own. So, whether I'm aware of it or not, I do have thoughts and feelings constantly going on inside of me. These are the inner tapes. Some people are aware of them, some people aren't even aware that they exist, and some people who have evolved to a certain level consciously, spiritually, are aware of them but know how to have those energies uh, transform, okay? So we are energetic beings. I can change the energy of anger and rage within me. And again, when I say me, I'm not talking words, I'm talking me as each individual soul, each individual right. soul. I can go in and I can change my thoughts and feelings and emotions that create anger in me. So if you ever notice, people who are angry people usually hang out with angry people. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Energetically, they support each other in the anger. So if I can find my thoughts and feelings that are creating the emotion of anger, or the emotion of feeling unloved, or the emotion of feeling that I have to caretake for everybody. 
if I can find what thoughts and feelings, those vibrations that are being created in and around me, right. I can change them. And you know, it, it sounds dorky, but we do it with love. Mm -hmm. But not love that's conditional love, it's the love of the divine, the unconditional love we all get from whoever our source is. Right. And that is the way to change those vibrations. So, you know, there's this huge teaching. People have to understand the teachings behind it because like attracts like. But what does that mean? Um, you get back what you put out. What does that mean? I mean, there's teachings. I spent two days in classes teaching those concepts. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, in a nutshell, that's how we are vibrational beings. If I mean, it can be measured scientifically. A person who thinks certain thoughts, they can see it on the on the measuring stick. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to, and I appreciate you explaining it that way, just to open up the, the avenue for people that are interested, who are curious, who might say, you know what, I'd like to, I'd like to know more about that. Because there's nothing more empowering than to know you can be safe in this world, know that you can, and to give that to our children, this next generation, and because of uh, what I see a lot of the chaos and the, is a lot of fear we don't want to pass that on again to the next generation you know um, we want to um, elevate them I mean they're coming in so fresh and clean and you know having this experience on planet earth and and if we don't teach them to hate and fear like we have been taught then mm -hmm. they won't um, you know, and I, I just think just knowing that it's possible to, um, and that we are vibrational beings is huge. And um, I've worked with a lot of children, and you know, they're easy to work with because they're still connected. And so, basically, if children know that they are connected to the system of light or beings of light, whatever angels, right. if right. the children are taught that they're connected to this stuff and they're taught how to change any negative thoughts, any fears. If they're taught from very young, they will learn the, the way to stay safe and protected and clear at all times. And it works. It works, it works, it works. Um, yeah. So, I love it. That is, that, that is powerful. Um, before we conclude, um, this is being a pretty long um, chat, Rose, and I appreciate your time and, and giving us all of us your time and the healing energies but is there anything else that you would like to, to share with people in particular what you've got coming and what they can access would be also helpful okay so I do want to say we're in the process of a lot of changes in our in our work in my work and um, so what I want to mention to people is we we are launching a new website and a new Easter and I'm really excited because I've had this dream for like two years, maybe more, of having a website where people could actually sign up online and do everything online. And so I'm hoping to have that launched in this next coming month. Um, so I'm also, I've been strongly guided, and it's interesting, we've touched on it a few times on, in this talk, strongly guided to go virtual, to, to be able to bring the teachings to more people around the world and to bring the, 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 the classes and whatever I do more um, more to, to more people and to access more people. So we're going to hopefully be able to start offering virtual meditation nights with lectures and virtual healing nights that people can sign up via the website and uh, then call in or webinar in or and be able to use their, their mobiles, mobile phones, iPads. Um, so we're hoping, it'll, you know, if everything goes according to plan, um, we're hoping to be launched within the next month for all of that. And, and then I'm not sure where that's going to take take us. Um, my plan is to teach more classes. I'm teaching a brand new class in Calgary at the beginning of December. And it is about being the new human in this new world. Okay, say that again. <clears throat> Sorry, Rose. Can you say that again? You're teaching a class in Calgary in December? Beginning the first weekend of December. Okay. I'm teaching a new class, and it's about the new human being in this new world. It's, I'm going to cover the DNA. 
I'm going to cover an, a little bit about initiations, um, how the elemental world works with us and how we work with them, along with the angels and the archangels. So it's kind of, from what I understand, because of course it'll be the first time I teach it, so when I teach the first time I just record the class and create notes. And so based on what needs to come through, but it'll be, I'm excited, it's a new class and it's going to be in Canada. And then I'll teach the same class in Denmark next year in September. And is it a, a weekend or one night or how, how long is the class? Two nights? Two days. Two days. Um, yeah, it runs over two days. Wonderful. And it's intense. It'll be intense. So um, we definitely have a prairie tour coming up in the middle of October. We're going to be in Medicine Hat for a healing night and Swift Current for a channeled evening as well as a healing night. But I'm teaching harmonizing body systems in Swift Current. That's the famous class I've talked about over and over where you get a real concrete base understanding of how we operate as physical, spiritual beings on this planet. It's very meat and potatoes oriented. And, and meat and potatoes is appropriate for the Prairie Tour. And, and um, is all that information on your website then? It's all on the website and then just understand that at some point it's going to flip over to the new one and then there, there might be glitches. So, But it, it should be all on the website already. Okay, so. all right. So just so people can check for their dates and, and where you're at and so forth. And um, also just, you know, this is sort of in the um, early stages. So as I've mentioned um, previously on some of my shows, that we are expanding Let's Get Real Chatting with Catherine into a network of shows and I'm going to be inviting um, people who've done their work, people who are really teachers, people who are, you know, ready to share more um, to have actual shows on the network of shows. And so, and Rose and I have been talking about that as a possibility for the future. That, so that's something I want you, we're, we're in the early stages, but I wanted to let you know that um, that is something that could be coming you know, soon, and to watch for that on, uh, all the information will be posted on Let's Get Real Chatting with Catherine.com, but it's called an Exquisite World Global Network, so I'm hoping to um, expand and join, you know, with people all over the world, as well as having sponsors from all over the world that can um, help us support this expansion in these times. It's needed. Yeah. It's time. It's yeah. time to yeah. bring things more mainstream, rather than just having these little groups and it's time to spread spread the light exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah well I and I appreciate uh, Rose your interest in in that and because uh, I know it'll be a huge contribution to that network and um, and I appreciate you being with me today so if um, if if that's all um, you feel if you feel you you're complete I'm always hesitant to say that because how can you be complete we've got so much but there it's is so I mean, it's not but I think it's it's enough for today. I think there's been a lot of things we've talked about, a lot of food for thought, a lot of seeds planted. Um, definitely, if anybody's interested, you can always email. If you can't get onto the website for whatever reason, my assistant can always uh, direct you to what classes to take. Um, as Catherine mentioned, with private sessions, I, 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 I've got like a three-year wait list. And so it's just gotten to a point I've got to do more of these big events so that I can help more people. Yeah. And people all feel that they've got their own unique issues, their own unique things that they need to talk to me about. But you know what I've learned over all these years for the thousands of people I've worked with, they're all the same. <laughs> we all have similar things. It might be dressed in a different drama, but right. we all have similar things. And I find, and people who have attended a lot of my events, they find that it's much richer to be in a group environment addressing issues as opposed to one-on-one. -on -one. Because one-on-one, -on -one, it's like you can't imagine or think of all the different layers of what needs to be dealt with. That's a very so, good point. Very good point. And that, and that you often learn from somebody else's experience, which you didn't even realize was also yours. So, yeah. which is very cool. So. so it's a great session. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's out there who has listened and for sharing. And it would be, yeah, lovely to see you at some of our events. Yes. Well, 
thank you, Rose, and, and I encourage all of you to um, go to the um, website and check out Rose's page and go to her, the links are there to go to her website and get more information. Get her book for Pete's sakes. It's a tool. It's perfect. A journey to self enlightenment. It's, it truly is encoded with energy to help you and can't think of anything better and also all of her events that are there so thanks so much for joining us for this wonderful chat september 2014 and hopefully rose and i'll chat again before the end of the year and i will let you know when that is so until next time take care bye bye <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? Thank you to my guests for sharing with us today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share the link. You can join us for live shows by going to Let's Get Real chattingwithcatherine.com and listen to the replays from the show page, preview guests, and explore links to our Facebook fan page, WordPress blog, and more. We are creating an exquisite world. Until next time, take care.